mile into the mountain, rescue from outside is next to impossible. The water here is very fast flowing and deep. That's why we're wearing life jackets, is that really we're going to be spending a lot of time in the water, trying not to get too cold, and um, really just battling against the flow. Boost has put in these lines so he can traverse across safely. Oh, it's pretty fast through here, Moose. You don't want to get swept away there, do you? What do you think? Well, it's like the North Sea. Freezing. Oh! Forcing themselves against the flow, the team press on into the darkness. He is. This is a dwarf kingfisher. You can see just how small he is. George is back at work with the other scientists. Look at that, it's really fast. Their work is vital if they are to prove this jungle is worth saving. We've got, that, uh, we've got uh, foot Alana Maltby is the bat expert. She's made another important find. This yeah. is the second potential new species of bat. Amazing. Yeah, it really is amazing. It's, it's really unusual to find new, new mammals and new bats. And to have two, in, um, two potential new species in the course of a couple of weeks, that's just, that's, yeah. that's like nothing I've ever found before. The frogman has been kept busy too. And you can spend the whole, uh, you can spend the whole day trying to, uh, trying to catch one of these things. But this is yet another frog which Alan Allison has never seen before. It's an interesting little guy because I'm almost certain that it's a new species. This is exactly why I'm here. We're seeing animals in a hundred years' time it might not even be here. Well, we do. You can see it. It will struggle with you. The scientists will report their findings to the government of Papua New Guinea to lend support in protecting Mount Busabe's weird and wonderful wildlife. This is amazing. This is a really, a really strange world. Here, here is a beetle larva. Over there we have a tiny bat. So here is an animal with a backbone that is a fraction the size of this. Alana, yes. can I just compare the size of that bat <laughs> to the size of this insect? Which one do you think is more beautiful, George? I have to confess, Alana, on this occasion the bat does win it. Hands down. <laughs> Even I couldn't really love this thing. Oh. Yeah, stay together, yeah. In Mageni, the only respite from the deafening river is to enter one of its many side caverns. Well, this is nothing like any other cave that we've seen so far in Mageni. It's quiet, <laughs> relatively dry. Yeah, we can talk to each other without yeah. shouting. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Look at these stiles, they're fantastic. Yeah. Check this out here, Steve. This formation, you've got a column that's formed where a stalactite has met a stalagmite. This is deposited on a mud floor. But can you see how it's all fractured and broken there? Mm -hmm. That's almost certainly as a result of uh, earth movement, earthquakes. Mm. What do you think it'd be like down here? Oh, it'd be terrifying. Yeah, it really would be terrifying. It's been a long day of caving, and two miles into the mountain, they have to find somewhere to sleep. It's dusk in the village. Tomorrow, Gordon will set off in search of birds of paradise. But tonight, the village elders have allowed him to see their headdresses. Oh, nice fire. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from the Ragia, the bird of paradise. Yeah. Uh, you are correct. Some, some are Ragia. Yeah, see, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay. So I have a personal, personal dresser. So did we use these headdresses for ceremonies? For ceremonies, yes. Okay. Um, 
It's quite unexpected. A lot of the early collections of birds of paradise and other bird species that are found in Papua New Guinea came from headdresses which were sort of taken by explorers and brought back to um, the West. And in those early days, when they saw feathers like those, ornithologists just thought that it was fakery, that it couldn't be a bird that um, had such spectacular feathers. <laughs> going dead. <laughs> I've made myself a little pet here. There's my sleeping bag ready to go. Tackle bag and half a carry mat. What more can a man ask for? The cavers have found a place for the night, but they're not alone. That is really weird. This is a freshwater crab from the outside, um, and I would guess that it's probably been swept in here right from where the water's gathered for this cave. What's incredible though, to me, is if you look at it close up, it's absolutely covered in parasites, rather grotesque white blobs, which are kind of moving all over it. Look at those. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. It really lends to the sense this place has of being just like an alien landscape. It's enticing to think from here quite how much is unexplored that's, that's like what we've seen so far in this area. It's probably riddled with caves like this and, and some of them will never see the light of day and never be explored. The team desperately need their rest. But in a small, damp cave, under a million tons of rock, sleep may not come easily. <laughs> 